Yeah, so uh, it's really the reason why I'm leaving Everlook. And I, I put it down into five different topics as to why I'm leaving the project and then a few bullet points for each topic. Basically, I'm just, I'm not happy with the direction of the project. I don't think that management is really concerned with the game itself or the players, but more so with the structure surrounding the project. And I don't agree with that. I think that the focus should always be on the players and the experience of the gameplay. The management aims to run this pro project as Blizzard would. And this inc really includes all the corporate bullshit, which just drains the soul from the experience for the players. I don't agree with that. I think we can do a lot better. We have the ability to do better, and we simply stop ourselves from doing better out of either laziness or the idea that we need to be like Blizzard. The management has reprimanded me multiple times for doing my job in a way that players enjoy most. They really don't like when I appear in-game to fix things, and they'd rather have, have me remain invisible at all times or do stuff on the dev server. But it's not conducive to my job. It's a waste of my time. You know, I have a lot of stuff that I try and get done during the day, so jump, jumping through these hoops pointlessly is is a waste of my time. But players don't like that. Players would rather have the GM appear in front of them and fix the problem right in front of them within 30 seconds of them filing the ticket. So it's like, why would we not do what the players enjoy there? Well, one thing that really pissed me off, that really made me unhappy with the direction of the project, is that we've let bugs persist for up to two weeks at a time, despite being fixed like within the same day on the dev server. Now, I understand that you only want to do one restart per week, but when it's the month of the launch and there's still stuff being hammered out, like you have to make an exception for that. I don't expect us during AQ patch to be doing daily restarts to fix shit, but you know, if there's something that's majorly broken and everybody is progressing from 1 to 60, you have 20,000 people leveling from 1 to 60, and all 20,000 people are getting fucking roadblocked on some bullshit issue, like the, the triage issue is the biggest one. Um, everybody wants to do first aid, everybody wants to max out their first aid, so to have this quest being broken is a, it's a major problem, and it, it needs to get fixed right away. Like, we can't put it off for two weeks because we're waiting for the next update. Like, it just doesn't work. And frankly, I think that the project is run by people who simply don't understand the essence of the game. They don't, they don't understand the spirit of the game and what makes the game such a magical experience and why people still play it almost 20 years later on emulated private servers. You know, it's like the, the soul of the game. It's complex, but it's the freedom of choice that players have. I, I truly don't believe that the management understands that. I think that they're more concerned with maintaining the corporate atmosphere, and they think that, well, if we have the best structure behind the project, then the project will be successful. I, I don't think that's true. I, I think I think V Plus was probably a great example of that. V Plus launched with the same amount of players as Everlook, and it's not because they had a bunch of custom stuff. Well, obviously, that, that was the big draw, that they had a bunch of custom stuff, but their management was horrible. Like, it was basically one Russian guy in his basement, you know, they fucking all sorts of issues. And it, obviously, it sucked. It, it hurt the server. But uh, people didn't join the server thinking that, oh, it's going to be well-maintained and managed. No, people joined because they realized it'd be fun experience. Number two on the list, I disagree with the majority of staff decisions. And I, I've been a very outspoken critic of many of their decisions. Oftentimes, I am the only one on that side of the fence, and the rest of the staff is on the other. And it's led to a lot of internal conflict, which it sucks. But uh, number one, I think that we spent way too much time over the summer delaying the project needlessly. I think the project was pushed off too late for n no purpose. And the more that I realize it, the reason that it was pushed off so late is very likely because White Kidney had insider information that Blizzard's contract would be ending with NetEase, and he knew exactly when to launch the server to get the most amount of players. I, that, personally, I don't doubt. That's a personal belief, and I don't have hard evidence of that, but that's just, it makes sense. It just makes sense as to why we would pick an arbitrary date fucking six months out from the project opening to launch, when the project could have been launched in the summer. We, we would have had more players, too, I believe, that if we had launched back in, like, June or July. Obviously, there would have been more issues, more bugs, but we would have hammered them out. It wouldn't have been an issue. The idea that we'll be shut down for sharing client links is 
horse shit. Absolute horse shit. Fucking Ascension WoW, uh, Kronos, Turtle WoW, all the other projects. They all have their own client links. They have torrent links. They have all this other stuff. If you're telling me that we couldn't link a client, like, I, I don't buy that. I have a client link on my own website, Wallcraft. And when people ask for the client, I, I've stopped telling them, Google it. I just tell them, go to Wallcraft and download it from there. Like, it's the fucking client I use. And obviously my website's not shut down yet, so I you could say, well, we don't have the you don't have the same traffic as we do and Blizzard pays attention to us. What the fuck are they gonna do? Like the the whole point is this is a private server bootleg project. This is a bootleg copyrighted ripoff of their product. We host the server specifically in France so that they can't shut us down. Like the idea that they're gonna fucking send a hit squad after you because you've shared a client link is hearted. I, I think it's just dumb. Yeah, it, like that, that that one really gets to me because the amount of players who have been turned off from the project simply because they couldn't find an easy accessible client and they've never played before. Like we're 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 supposed to be bringing in new players who have never experienced the game and have never experienced the magic of World of Warcraft. Not not just the private server veterans who have every client patch available on their computer. You know, it's like you need to think about them people primarily the 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 ones who are already familiarized with it. You don't really have to worry too much about because they know how it works. Discouraging players from using the 1.14 client is totally pointless. It's a it's a waste of time. We cannot stop the 1.14 client usage without disallowing Mac clients altogether because it uses the same warden checks. Uh, many players, they simply prefer the 1.14 client. I've never used it myself. When Britannia was first starting to develop Hermes Proxy, I had uh, gotten like the earliest version of it. And this was like back when literally all you could do was just walk around in the game because there was nothing else no, nothing else working. That's the only time I've personally used it. I don't like the new client. I never played Classic myself, so I don't even know what the 1.14 client offers me that the 1.12 doesn't, and I'm a, I am I run my own custom project that requires custom patches for the 1.12 client, so like obviously I prefer that. But um, many players do prefer the 1.14, and they wouldn't play the server if they couldn't use the 1.14 client. And there's an active team developing the 1.14 client, and it's the same people who make the server core, and it's the same people who make the anti-cheat, it's the same people who make the warden modules, so it's like, it's all the fucking same people making the same product, I don't understand why you would restrict usage of one of their products, and you can say, well, it's because it's open to abuse. Dude, if you know how to send, like, fake packets with the 1.14 client, I don't think you're gonna have much of a problem cheating on the old one. Like, and the only real difference is warden checks, and warden is the most useless garbage. It's honestly, Warden is fucking pointless. I, I find no value in Warden aside from like ancient fucking hacks that are like super, super easy to detect and people still insist on using them. Like, it, Warden's just pointless. The The whole reason that the Russian fan-made 1.12 client works is because they bypass Warden. They bypass Warden by renaming the executable file and then copying it to uh, their client. And essentially, you run the modified client and the fucking Warden checks the wrong client. It doesn't even check the right client. It checks the one with the name WoW XE or EXE. Warden is kind of fucking useless. The idea that we need to stop people from using 1.14 because of X, Y, or Z reasons is just horseshit. Uh, really, White Kitty, I think, wants to stop people from using 1.14 because he's terrified of Blizzard. And that's uh, that's that's a personal issue. I don't give a shit about Blizzard. In fact, like, fine. If, this, if I was in charge of this project, I would give Blizzard the middle finger every fucking day. And they, they would do nothing about it. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. On to the next point, though. Reprimanding us for posting media which talks about Everlook positively is so counterintuitive. And I've been yelled at multiple times for, like, posting, uh, Rat Radix got yelled at because Asmongold mentioned Everlook in a video. And it was a really positive mention. Asmongold says, look at Everlook, look at Ascension, look at Turtle Wow. These projects have a massive amount of players. And obviously it's not as big as a Blizzard, but we're talking thousands of players who still play these games. So obviously there's big interest. And he's like, these people, they, they are private server developers that do it for free. And it's like such a huge praise to us. And I know he knows about us. I know all these others. Look at Azimus, look at Cargos, look at uh, all these other streamers. They, they either play the project or they know about the project or or they talk about the project at some point. So it's like, why would we not want to promote that content? It shines a good light on us. It's counterintuitive. And when we linked that Asmongold shout out video, White Kidney told us to fucking remove it. And he said, that's a big loss. Like a big L guys, we should delete that clip from Discord. I'm like, why? And he goes, well, it's because they mentioned Turtle Wow too. It's like, are you fucking serious, dude? <laughs> it's just, that doesn't make sense. It's counterintuitive. And that's most of the decisions made 
by the staff are just so seemingly counterintuitive. They don't make sense. Like, why why would we not do this? This is it's a big win for us. I just I, I don't understand it. And you know, Occam's razor really follows that it's probably the simplest answer. The fact that it doesn't make sense kind of tells me that there's something else going on background that I'm just not aware of. I guess it doesn't really sit right with me that we're not trying to like actively promote the fucking project or that uh. We, we don't have any type of actual media presence and you know it's it's all the decisions they just don't make sense we've been reprimanded for directly confronting bot developers on their own website and that's this is talking about me the, the number one bot program for world of warcraft private servers has explicitly said to his clients do not use this on everlook you will be banned and he straight up said, and this is like a massive program too, like hundreds of thousands of people using it or tens of thousands. And he said, the, the fucking developer, he said, doesn't seem like that they're actually detecting my bot. It just seems like they have really, really good staff members who constantly pay attention to stuff and that they're manually banning people. And he kept telling people, and he's like, it's not hard to see what a bot is or to tell what a bot is. It's more difficult to like automatically detect it. But if a GM is standing there in the starting zone, own, watching people he can tell who's a fucking bot so like the staff the staff is ruining the chances of using this on the server and you probably will be banned which obviously we it, it can be detected it's it's not a mystery that we can easily detect it it fucking blows up my fucking console all day <laughs> so the software's definitely detectable it, it that's great though we should be able to detect bots. We should be able to deal with them. And when he had posted that on his botting forum, I literally registered an account. I signed up for that. And I fucking made a post and I said, your bot scripts will never work on Everlook. They won't work on Everlook because we actually have staff who care about the game. This isn't Blizzard. This isn't some random Joe Schmo private server. I said, we constantly watch. We constantly check. We have the most so sophisticated tools to detect bots, but we don't even need those because I sit here for 10 hours a day watching every single starting zone every single player and if another player sees a bot all they have to do is message me on discord i will ban them within 30 seconds i will jump on the game i'll go to the bot i'll see that it's a bot and i'll ban them i'll ban their whole ip and i'll ban all the accounts associated with them and i'll even look up the accounts that are similar to their name and oh just because your name was greg 224 and there's an account named greg 226 like who the fuck do you think that is i know right away and i'm just gonna ban them all and then you can complain after so it's like being proactive being very very active and on top of the ball is what makes it work and uh i was reprimanded though i was reprimanded for making that post on his forum and he said we don't want to be unprofessional we want to look professional and to go there and make fun of these botters is a bad look on us and that doesn't make sense like these people i, I want to drive the nail i want to drive the hammer head into the nail so hard that the fucking thing blows out the other side of the board you know and i want all these people who are saying hey i just got banned on four accounts for botting and i was only level five and well then the lead developer of the server shows up and says yeah i banned you myself because i was watching because i fucking watch everything like that puts it in their mind that it doesn't work and it's so discouraging to all botters to even persist and continue so to tell me that that's unprofessional like that doesn't make sense i'm sorry and it has the opposite effect when you tell me delete that post and then they see that the post is fucking deleted and they say oh that was, that was weird whatever this is, it doesn't make sense it's counterintuitive yeah and reprimanding me for banning bots i've been reprimanded in fact all staff members have been reprimanded from banning bots and this is something that people should be aware of i, I didn't really want to discuss this internally but for the first week i spent every fucking minute of the game just constantly watching for cheaters and botters and anything i could find i banned hundreds of people on the first week like straight up hundreds of people and i i serviced hundreds of tickets 500 tickets in the first week i banned like 300 botters and then after the first week white kidney comes around and says hey stop banning bots we're just going to collect names on a list and then do a big ban wave so we can catch all their accounts which is a good idea ban waves are really effective the problem is when you're yelling at people for banning bots and then you make everybody put it on a list people get lazy it's a lot easier when you see the bot in game and you ban them than putting it on a fucking list and letting it fester on a list for a week and then trying to pull off a ban ban wave like a lot of the accounts didn't even get caught in the ban wave and then once the ban wave was over nobody was writing down names and nobody was banning bots so during the second week botting exploded on the server and i think a lot of players saw that they said wow there's no no bots during the first week and then the second week there was just 
an insane amount of bots. The entire server was infested. And the reason for that is because we were being reprimanded for banning bots. We were being told multiple times. And we had we had our asses slapped for fucking banning bots. In fact, multiple times I would log on. There would be no GMs online. I'd ban a bot. And then I'd wake up the next day for a fucking bitchy message on Discord. Hey, why are you banning bots? It's like, they're fucking cheating, dude. Like, who cares? Just get rid of them. People, uh, pe the reason I logged on to fucking ban them was because somebody messaged me about it. So clearly players are seeing this and it's a bad reflection on us. I can understand if like these are just a big massless name that aren't interacting with players. They're just doing dungeons or something like that and people don't actually have to see it and deal with it but when you have 20 bots in a starting zone killing all the mobs like and people see this they're gonna fucking log off and not come back. Like it needs to be dealt with immediately. Can't wait a week or two to fucking ban them because they've already done damage. They've already sold gold and it gets laundered so heavily too that yeah sure you might catch an extra 10% more people who are buying gold from a band wave, but you've just let fucking 50,000 gold into the game for no reason. And now everything's devalued. It's fucked up. So I, I, I don't agree with that. I think my strategy of playing Robocop and flying around the zones, just zapping bots all day like a fucking maniac, I think that's way more effective. I think it strikes fear in the hearts of players when they, they can't even get past the fucking uh, Northshire Abbey without getting banned. Because there's so many watching. And it brings me on to the next point. D different point entirely. We over-moderate chats. Almost all staff members are self-described leftist slash socialist or communist. Almost all on the staff. Out of like the 20 members, I'd say maybe like half of them are pretty hard in terms of leftis leftism. European liberalism, communism or socialism or something further on the spectrum. But the typical censorship that you'd expect from them is very obvious. And it's apparent. Uh, I'm one of the only Americans on the team. Gummy is American, and yeah, I think just me and Gummy really are the only Americans. So, and he he's just a crash fixer, so he doesn't really interact with chat or anything like that. I, I can immediately tell that these people don't really understand the concept of true freedom. And, like, freedom is one of the main draw points of WoW is personal freedom. You get to go in the game and you get to be whatever you want. If you want to be a piece of shit and kill the same guy over and over and over until he quits the server, well, yeah, you're a dick, but that's the appeal of the game. You know, it's the draw of the game is that you have personal freedom to be whoever you want. And I understand that there has to be a level of professionalism to be conducive. And I, I believe fully that the rule should be don't, don't say what you wouldn't say outside of a place of employment. Like, that's that simple. The world chat in-game should be monitored, but really no other chats need to be monitor for language if somebody called you the gamer word in your dungeon group put them on ignore it's that simple like if somebody was using a naughty word that you don't like i have so many fucking people obviously every day message me well this guy called me the bad word ban him immediately and it's like dude just put him on ignore yeah well he's gonna say it to somebody else it's like well they can put him on ignore too like it's you have an in-game function like that and i can't police chat in every every facility the discord though Holy shit, man. During the summer, the amount of fucking censorship and over-moderation completely killed off the Discord for a hot minute. We used to be so busy and so active, and then we started cracking down on just ridiculous stuff. And again, I understand things like spam or stuff that's illicit or illegal content, stuff like that, or stuff that's, you know, obviously crosses a line. But I have screenshots of them fucking renaming uh, people in-game. The one guy, his name was Biden Cheated, and they forced renamed his character because it went against the terms of service. But I don't see any pro-leftist names, political pro-leftist names being removed. I don't see the fucking uh, AOC Mr. Who Watt guy, his AOC profile picture. I don't see that getting removed. If somebody had an account named Trump Lied, I doubt that that would be renamed because these people are leftists, and their personal opinions shine through. I'm not a leftist. I'm not very, I don't want to say I'm not very political. I'm like a fucking weird esotericist political person you know i'm a, I'm a ted kaczynski kind of guy <laughs> that's say put it that way so like the american or left right p political dichotomy doesn't really appeal to me or apply to me but i don't believe in censorship i'm an american i believe in free speech i believe if you want to have biden cheated as your fucking in-game name like that's fine and personally if i if I had my way, this server was originally supposed to be RP PVP for the purpose of being able to justify when we have to rename somebody like that because it's out of game. It's referencing something in the real world and we don't want to bring the real world into the game. We want to keep the game in the game because this is where people come to escape oftentimes the real world. So like, I understand that mentality and that that's totally acceptable. That's not restricting freedom of speech because you have the, the rule set of, upon which it's agreed that we don't break uh, kayfabe there. 
So, you know, don't break the fourth wall in the game there. But they didn't. They didn't want to do the RP tag because they thought it would be too too much like Turtle WoW. So RP, PvP was a no-go. They just did PvP. And obviously, you can't really justify enforcing rules like that at that point. But uh, again, like, it's just over-moderation that kills off the community. It doesn't need to happen. It just doesn't need to happen. And if I had my way, we would have one Discord channel and people could just fucking spam all day in it. I wouldn't care. I wouldn't, as long as nothing was illegal in it, I wouldn't care. But that's just me. That's how I would, I would do it. On to the next point, though. Banning players for emergent gameplay is completely wrong. The whole Engor situation was such a fuck up. And that was like one of the many straws on the camel's back that really pissed me off. I, I want to make it very clear that I, I'm not an Engor fan. You know, I don't consider myself friends with him. I've talked to him on the project a few times, but I didn't even know about him up until this project. And that's because I'm always one of the fucking top 10 people to level 60 and I've never had to deal with him personally in the game. Like... He's never affected my gameplay, so I don't care. And I understand the frustration that he brings, but that's part of the game. And if there is emergent gameplay, then it should be addressed, if it needs to be addressed, directly within the game. Not by reprimanding or punishing players. If a, if a player is not cheating, and they're not hacking, and they're not botting, and they're not abusing bugs, or doing anything illegal, or RMT, or anything like that, then they should never be banned. They just straight up never should be banned. And that's, that is actually Blizz-like, that mentality, because I can tell you all about my experiences back in original TBC, or at the Lich King, where you have a fucking notorious piece of shit on the server and he would do the same thing every day like uh back in emerald dream days and wrath of the lich king there was a guy on the server he was a torrent shaman named vegan and every half an hour he would go into iron forge and he would kill the auctioneers and then he would drink a flask of petrification and then queue into a battleground so you could never kill him and he, he would fucking constantly do this he would do this every half an hour non-stop like you, you could not use the auction house in iron forge and that was the whole point it was to destroy the auction house in iron forge so you couldn't actually use it and you had to go to a different city then it's like that's emergent gameplay that's part of the game it's obviously allowed within the game if it wasn't allowed you wouldn't be able to attack those npcs or do any of this shit and if it's not intended by the developers first should be able to fix it instead of banning the players or saying well this is this is the line that we put in the sand and it's totally arbitrary it, there's no determination which is what the current rules are and then say well they get banned for that after they cross the line and it's not so much Engor getting banned the reason why he was banned was because he was warned by a gm then persisted in it the problem is he was warned in the first place. No, he should never have been warned. If there's an issue with him killing the Defias Trader Escort NPC, well then we should just fix that. I should increase the health, which is what I've done uh, against the wishes of the staff. I gave it 1500 health, so he can't be one shot. You actually have a chance to kill Engor before he kills the Trader, and you can complete the quest, which is the, the best solution. And he can complain about it. Engor can cry, and he's made several videos crying. Well, he gave it more HP, I can't one shot it. It's like, yeah, well, you can find fucking cry all day nobody cares but the fact that you got banned for doing something that you were able to fully do within the game is horrible like that right there that moment right there was the real moment that i realized all right this like I, i'm not gonna be around here forever i i totally disagree with that and that's not just because of the decision but because of the amount of backlash that i got from the staff directly for speaking up about it and for unbanning engor i was the one who unbanned engor and i unbanned him within the first 20 minutes of me find well with, immediately after finding out when I found out it was like 20 minutes after the incident, people were talking about it. I'm like, wait, Engor got banned? What? And I looked at it and Torvon was standing there and Torvon was the guy who banned him. Torvon, he, Torvon's chill. Pretty, he's pretty cool. So I told him, I'm like, oh, dude, we just fucked up. Like, we can't be doing that. And he's like, wait, what? Well, he was holding on to. I'm like, dude, trust me, like, we cannot be doing this. It's going to fucking blow up in our faces. He's like, oh, okay. So I unbanned him and no problem. But then a dumb bro comes back and says, you know, you're you're overriding our authority. You're not a GM. You're just a developer. Don't, you know, stay in your lane kind of thing. And, you know, I, I don't want to personally attack a dumb bro, but he's him and him and White Kidney. I'll never work with again. And personally, I'd probably never work with anybody on the staff again. And no offense there, but I, I'm a lone wolf on that. I'd rather work by myself. I don't feel like it's very conducive to have a big fucking staff of people when I can just do it myself. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll never, I'll definitely never work with White Kidney or Dumbro again. Dumbro is, in, he's an HR corporate type. 
He imagines himself as the head of HR for Blizzard. He would make a really good DMV employee, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and for him, it's uh, it's about exercising authority and ensuring that the power structure stays in a way that's conducive to him. So like me unbanning Engor and overriding a GM's decision as a developer was such a fucking fiasco. I just didn't hear the end of it. And I just, I heard nonstop crying and whining. And I will say this again, I will say it as I have always said, if Engor didn't have like a fucking meltdown and turn everybody against him by being a crybaby he easily could have fucking killed the server like we were we didn't have the, all the chinese players we only had 2,000 people online and we had 2,500 people and then we lost 500 people after engor got banned because people thought oh okay it's just gonna be a dumb fucking darrow shire type uh situation so we are really really lucky that we got flooded with players at the same time and that he self-destructed because he could have easily whipped up a fucking mob and destroyed the server this is just t a terrible decision absolutely terrible decision and again this is like reaching back to the point that i talked about earlier in the video is that they say well the staff the decisions need to be made by staff and consulted except when they're made by us then they don't like that's just so fucking aggravating like this is this is obviously developer territory if there's a fucking issue in the game that needs to be addressed i will address it as a developer if there's an issue in game as a gm that needs to be addressed you can address it as a gm but you know if you if you want to if you want to have that that mentality that well we need to uh, have a powwow about any decision well it's got to be a two-way two-way street you can't just say that about development decisions and then do whatever you want as a gm because you've made up the rules without vote you know it's just that's that's not right that's not democracy and i'm not a fan of democracy but if you're gonna pretend that we have a fucking democracy you at least gotta abide by the rules of it and that's certainly not how it works the the idea that breakable things should remain in game because no changes is just pure autism it's ridiculous i'm sorry but like the defias trader having an extra thousand health so he can't be one shot so i don't have to deal with fucking hundreds of tickets a week is the easiest solution and nobody gets banned so like just don't cry about it sorry if something's fucked up and broken i will absolutely fix it i i will never ever listen to well it needs to stay broken because no changes no like that's that's not how i view the game and if you want it that way you can go fucking make your own broken version of the game and just enjoy dealing with the fucking hundreds and hundreds of tickets but i, I will do it in the most simple solution and th this brings me back to another example too the, the whole uh, the whole idea that GMs don't really care about anything besides flexing authority. Uh, there was, I got a DM one night from a Mangos developer. He plays the server and he said, hey, there's a safe spot in Booty Bay and can you come take a look at it? There's a guy who's able to stand on the bridge inside the end and the guards can't reach him. They don't have line of sight there. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll come take a look at it. Immediately I log on, I go there and i see a dumbro and torvon just standing there watching this guy safe spot and they literally are just standing there for like five fucking minutes watching this guy safe spot and i'm busy I, i'm busy working on bug fixes i only responded because a player messaged me and I, i'm i respond to all messages that i receive personally so I, no problem there but i'm busy i don't have time to waste and gm procedure is to issue a warning and then pull them into viper room and then consult them and say this is why you're getting punished and then issue the punishment and then file the paperwork and it's like a fucking 10 minute process it's like a 10 minute process out of my day to go fucking spank this idiot standing on the bridge and killing people and i don't have time for that okay like i'm busy and i just i find it to be an absolute waste of my time and if you want to waste your time because your time is really worthless otherwise that's fine but i value mine and i think you should value yours too because you know, there's a lot of tickets in the queue and wasting 10 minutes to fucking reprimand some guy safe spotting is a waste of time. So they're standing there, though, and I'm like, OK, I'm not dealing with this. So I just I spawned a guard patrol on the bridge, just a booty bay bruiser. And he's patrolling on the bridge now. It fixed the safe spot. It break the fucking line of sight on the bridge. So the player the player was obviously a little pissed. He's like, oh, okay, well, I guess I guess the GM's ruined that one, whatever. And then he went away. Yeah, no big deal. Whatever. Problem solved. I get a fucking message immediately from a dumb bro telling me that is not how we handle things. We had already issued a warning and we were waiting to see him do it again so we could ban him. And it's like, holy fuck, dude. That right there just tells me you don't actually care about fixing the problem. You want to flex authority. <laughs> like you could have fixed it by spawning a guard in seven seconds and call it a day problem solved but instead you wanted to issue a warning and then issue the final warning and then issue the ban it's like why like it's a fucking waste of your time I mean, it's obviously easy to figure out why it's because authority flexing authority meanwhile the player who i fixed the 
player who was on the bridge safe spotting doesn't know who spawned the guard, doesn't know who fucking put a guard there. Problem was solved within 10 seconds. So it's like that, that right there, it just, that pissed me off. Yeah, after that, I messaged White Kidney because it was like the fourth time me being yelled at by fucking a dumb bro for some horse shit corporate red tape rule. I told White Kidney, I said, I don't ever want to hear a fucking word from him. And I told White Kidney, I'm done banning bots and I'm done filing tickets because I'm just so sick of having to deal with all this bureaucratic bullshit. It's not conducive to the project. It's not conducive to actually running stuff. Uh, like, I understand you have to have a set of rules that people follow, but like, okay, we are all infested with bots now because people don't want to take the fucking 10 minutes that it takes to file the, the paperwork to ban a bot, a level four bot that like you just ban them and it problem solved well you didn't add the ban note and if you file his appeal on the website and then we got a review it's like fucking a dude come on yeah i'm i'm a little salty about that still because the first week i put in so much time and effort answering tickets and banning bots and just got nothing but bullshit thrown at me and it's just like okay but like uh, none of the actual players are unhappy only the botters are and you're on the side of the botters at that point in that argument <laughs> you know ah, all right well that, that's wrapping up the point on the list of why i disagree with the majority of the staff decisions number three on the list is i believe that the project is mismanaged just like severely mismanaged i really do uh we're severely understaffed for current population a majority of the time when i'm online i am the only staff member online we have like six or seven active gms we need a lot more you know we need 30 active gms just to deal with the amount of fucking people we have right now and they don't need to be high ranking gms they don't need to be able to fly around and spawn shit they just need to be able to answer tickets or moderate chat it's that simple they they remove gold spam from chat and answer tickets we can pick any trustworthy player that we see and know which we should know, and I, I know myself, who, who would make a good candidate for that. Like, we should just pick 20 players and say, all right, you have the ability to mute people for gold spam in chat. Don't abuse it. We know when you use it, so don't abuse it. And that, that would solve the problem. The tickets, the, we have a thousand tickets in the queue. We could give five players the ability to answer tickets and just say, all right, all you got to do is just read the ticket. If it's something that a GM can address, just forward it to a GM. If it's not, then we can just get rid of the ticket. Just sort through it. It just takes a lot of time to do. So it's like, it shouldn't be a problem there's a lot of players that we could easily have fulfill this role who are trustworthy good honest players and wouldn't mind helping out and it's not like a 24-hour job you know you're on a zeppelin you can fucking solve 10 tickets while you're waiting for the zeppelin it's fine but uh yeah we're just we're totally understaffed um, it brings me to the next point was that the rules were not decided by the staff of this project the rules for the game that we enforce in the discord and in the game they were written over half a decade ago by a dumb bro and really no one else had a say in the matter and we can say well people on the staff are together blah 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 but no like i believe that responsibility falls on the highest rung of the ladder so when there's rules that were written i look at whoever's in charge and i say you're the one with the authority to change them and you choose not to the rules were made back on well the rules have been around since elysium and we won't change them okay well then we didn't vote on them this isn't rules voted on or decided by the staff of this project that's that simple might as well just fucking rip the rule book right out of blizzard and had blizzard make the rules for us that's that's more so a grievance that i have but it's again like that's that's not how it should be and if it's going to be like that then we can't fucking play the opposite on other subjects you know you can't say well the staff has to decide on the rules for the game well no we wrote them years ago okay well then i'm just going to fucking do what i want as a developer and you don't get to vote on it sorry you're not a developer <laughs> it's that simple so yeah yeah it's just it's frustrating frustrating and a lot of players don't like it and a lot of staff don't like it you know like i said the multi-boxing rule is just kind of bullshit the fucking in-game briefing rules are bullshit or at least should be addressed in some regard on the next point yeah despite this they still demand half staff meetings regarding any of my development decisions the amount of bullshit i had had to deal with with things like uncapping rested experience allowing zero xp rates in-game jokes like the tracks and keswick thing has completely been sickening like especially the fucking tracks and keswick thing man they gave me so much shit over that and players love it so it's just like really do i do i really care no i don't sorry <laughs> like you you're gonna fucking give me a bunch of bullshit over that i really don't care dude the players like it and if you don't like it well that just makes me me like it even more <laughs> at this point and it, it's an homage it's an homage to private servers of the past with the same player base the same faces the same people now alex central was in the discord earlier this year before he got banned for 
fucking having a meltdown. So it's like, I guarantee you, he knows that that's in game and has seen that himself. And he probably has a warm butterflies in his heart or maybe some greed and says, I, d- I don't know and I don't care. But I think it's fucking hilarious. I think players appreciate it. I think it's something that players can see that's not impactful in any regard in any way and uh just think wow the developers really do care people who run this place really do care and i i've been told multiple times to remove it and i just straight up refuse every time i get told i just say yeah don't worry i'll get i'll get to that later i i I pull a white kidney and i say oh yeah don't worry i'll get to that later and knowing full well that i never will (laughs) so that's 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 his favorite tactic to use and i personally hate that because it's lying but you know what i fucking flip that coin on him when i need to everything in the project is compartmentalized no one has any clue what's going on information is shared on a need to know basis i had one developer ask me the lead developer what the dynamic respawn rates were today just today i couldn't answer that I don't have access to that information. You'd have to ask White Kidney or Bully Mully. Bully Mully doesn't know what the parameters really do because he's not a V-Mangos developer. He's got computer skills, but if you ask him to fucking change dynamic spawns to include only level 40 mobs with a respawn timer of 3,800 millise- milliseconds or below, he wouldn't know what to fucking change. I-, I have to tell him exactly what I need to change. And that's fine because like his job is to handle the back end stuff but you know everything's so compartmentalized that we really don't have an idea of what's going on and everything is purposely kept in the dark while decisions are made behind closed doors there's very little transparency with how things are run and there's absolutely zero transparency regarding anything back end i basically have to ask white kidney to get any information uh, about anything like especially with some, the world database tables like if there's a fucking creature that's has a bad spawn point on the server but it's not reflected in the dev server i uh i, I need him to get that information for me if i need a, an update run to to move the creature to fix it I have to give it to White Kidney and then hope that he gets around to it at some point that week. It's like try, trying to fucking get stuff done is just such a chore, if pointlessly. And uh, there's just no transparency. I, I don't have access to logs or am able to audit. And he claims that auditing happens by the GM team, but I haven't seen it. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is there. The, the server is currently overrun with bots. By my estimate, 10% of the active players online at any given time are bots. It's an absolutely insane amount of Chinese players that are cheating with no integrity or respect for the game. And uh, they constitute a majority of the players. And again, I'm not saying all Chinese players are cheaters, but a majority of cheaters are Chinese. So it's a fucking problem and it needs to be addressed. And we have one staff member who speaks Chinese, Tiger Hunter. He's a really nice guy. I like Tiger, Tiger Hunter a lot. But he's the only GM who speaks Chinese, really. I think Criterion or one of the others i think speaks mecha blade maybe speaks like a little bit of mandarin but uh yeah the server is totally overrun by bots by my estimates like i said 10 percent of the players are bots active players on the server are bots population simply does not matter when two-thirds of the population cannot speak english and actively work against our interests by botting and cheating and again it's fine if like there's a divide between who can really communicate because it's an international server but it's a problem for the staff the staff speaks english and we have not enough people that speak chinese to actually interface with them so it's like it's it's a problem that we can't stop it can't control we can stop it and we can control it but we choose not to yeah and really what are we going to do about it we're probably going to end up having to ban china altogether just because we don't have methods to enforce it yeah and again this touches back on the command to stop banning bots really really amplified that one all right uh i know the next point in the list though yeah that's the one thing that really did upset me and i I would say the very moment that i stopped respecting white kidney was that the way that the project was organized was there's a lot of staff doing different jobs and white kidney's job was to finance the server it's really all he had to do he didn't have to put in any effort or any time he just had to bankroll the project and if we took donations that'd be fine too you know if he was just kind of uh, getting all, all the ducks in a row that'd be fine but we didn't take donations and he didn't totally fund the server he asked the staff to chip in to cover the cost of it i don't know if that was just for the first month that he was looking for but the second he went around asking staff to donate money and asked if i wanted to chip in I, I i almost laughed i was lost at like laughing because i'm i'm looking i had like freaking 20 bucks to my name at the time I'm like, I, I work so much. I work 16 hours a day for free. <laughs> now you're asking me to fucking pay for this? Like, dude, 
it's, that was your job, you know. Uh, I just that that was disappointing. That was really disappointing. I fucking I remember when I saw that. I I actually took off that day. That was one of the very few days that I had taken off the entire time of the project. So I was just not happy. I'm like I just I went and played Dota all day. Like I can't even fucking I can't even right now. I simply don't trust White Kidney. I, I've worked with him for seven months. I don't trust White Kidney. I don't have confidence in White Kidney, and I don't trust him. He's, he's fucking damaged that too many times. And again, this is something that people already recognize within the private server community, or especially the Mangos development community. There's a reason why nobody else signed up to work on the project. No, I, I, I chose to because I care about the people who play the server, and I wanted them to have a good experience. And if I had to fucking, if I had to work with Ted Bundy on the fucking project, I would because you know what other options are there but yeah i'm not here to personally shit on white kidney i'll never work with him again it's that simple and that's really just the extent of it but he is the laziest person i've ever had the displeasure of working with genuinely he rarely shows up on time he spends the bare minimum amount of time and he puts the least amount of effort not of like anyone in the staff really which sucks because he is the gatekeeper of it if he was just a fucking random person, it wouldn't be a problem, but he is the one with the keys to the castle and nobody else. So having to go through him is such a fucking, such a problem. It's not, it's not conducive to running an efficient project. I, I think he's dishonest. He's just a master of bullshitting. He'll say whatever he needs to say to get whatever fucking positive response from people. He'll, he'll never ever say anything negative. No, will disappoint people in that regard, unless it's some overarching decision, but... You know, he'd, he'd rather respond with a fucking kidney dog meme picture to a serious question than just totally ignore it after, afterwards. He's a bullshitter, and he's always got an excuse to explain away failures. It really does. It's always something, oh, X, Y, and Z came up. It's like, I don't care, dude. It's just, it's happened so many times that I start to feel bad. He fucking, he was late the one week for like the 80th time, and he said, sorry, I was late. I actually, I had to call somebody, a friend I used to play Call of Duty with had died in Ukraine, and my... The first thought was, dude, you're two hours late. I don't give a shit. Like, I fucking don't care, dude. Yeah, people die every day. Sorry, I don't know this guy. You played video games with him. Like, I fucking don't care, dude. If your if your mom died, I would have a little bit more sympathy and say, well, I understand, you know. And I understand on a personal level, you know, you obviously have obligations, but for me. I, I don't care, dude. I work really fucking hard and you're wasting my time. My time is valuable. And again, I work on this project for free. I quit a high paying job. I, I was making 45 bucks an hour doing uh, television production up in New York. And I quit that job to fucking work on this shit full time. So, you know, you're wasting two hours of my time, but you're not paying me 90 bucks. So, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how you expect me to really care. I don't. Sorry. Not to sound, uh, not to sound cruel, but it's just like... It's, doesn't fucking matter to me, dude. And I'll, I'll, again, I'll recap and say this. There's no evidence of corruption. And if you ask me, I, I don't think that White Kidney is selling gold or selling accounts. The issue is there can never be any evidence. He is the sole person who controls all information. So, like, he is the only one with access to anything. And we basically have to trust him. And, again, I don't trust White Kidney. So, it's that simple. Again, I, I don't think that there's corruption, but I in I sent I sent Vincent the DM he had sent me. It's he very very bluntly said to me in DM White Kidney. He said there will never be evidence of corruption because you'll never have access to it. You'll never have access to any of the logs or anything that can prove it, and there'll never be evidence. So like, just stop worrying about it. Like that right there. And I to I, I directly told him after that. I'm like, dude, do you realize how fucking little people trust you? Everyone thinks you're shady already, and you're just trying to make yourself as shady as possible at this point like you think that you'd have a little bit of more fucking uh intuition to not say things like that that make people even less trustful of you i, I guess i guess he doesn't realize just how little people actually trust him I, I don't think that he realizes on a personal level that he is viewed like a drug dealer he's like a drug dealer yeah people smile and they act friendly to you because you're selling them drugs dude like you're selling them weed they're not gonna fucking make fun of your haircut tell you that you're an idiot because then they don't get what they want. But if you weren't supplying, I, I don't think that they would. I don't think that they would let you fucking uh, manage manage their Roth IRA. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that. I don't think anybody would trust you with that. Oh, and that's just how it is, dude. And it's because of the way that you act and the actions you've taken in the past. You should at least consider that in your decisions and say, well, if people don't trust me, that's fine. I, I want to help rebuild it. But he doesn't care. He's fucking. He's. 
he's a, he's a plastic plastic person. He's a three dollar bill. I've I've defended White Kidney myself the entire time of the project. I've always stood up for him. I've always had nothing but nice things to say about him. And oftentimes I found myself saying nice things about him and defending him for the sole sake of the project. And I don't want to say I'm bullshitting at that point, but it's it's really hard to say, oh no, White Kidney's the most fantastic guy. I love working with him. It's certainly not true. He is the most frustrating fucking person to work with. It really is. And there's a reason why nobody else wants to work with him. So <laughs> it's just it is how it is, but you should really consider this. And the project has only been successful in spite of him, not because of him. Hey, I want to make that very clear. That is not... Is not a brag or a boast on me in any way. I think it's just a criticism of him. This project is a team effort. It took a lot of people to get to this point, and it sure as shit wasn't easy. And I really don't think that there's been any point where I said, wow, I'm glad White Kidney's running a show. No, exact opposite. I often find myself thinking, man, if I, I wish Radix was running the show because then Radix would at least be online and be present and be responsive. He wouldn't disappear to go fucking get high and fuck his girlfriend for two hours in the middle of a meeting. Or tell me, hey, I'm gonna go have drinks with the boys. I'll be back in three days. Oh, server crashed. Shit, guess we're not playing for a couple days. Sorry. <laughs> you know, it's like, eh, it doesn't really work, dude. You have to get your priorities straight, or at least understand that if you don't have the time to do that, or don't have the means to do that, you have to give other people the ability to take care of it. And again, it's a trust issue that he has. And he claims that he left Hyjal because Nolan ordered the server hardware and without his permission and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, well, so you're claiming that you left Hyjal because you don't trust Nolan. And what Nolan says is that he doesn't trust you because you were the only one with root access to the server. And he didn't like that. And he wanted root access as well because he was the fucking developer. Now, I'll tell you this right now. I trust Nolan a lot more than... I trust White Kidney. Nolan hasn't really been active in the scene anymore since Hyjal. He still runs Raspy a while. But those two used to be good friends. And White Kidney says, oh, I don't really know that guy. And Nolan says, yeah, he was a really good friend of mine. And he just got really shady. Yep. And, and, and all the same people, too. All the same people say... See, I told you that this would happen once the news broke out that I'm leaving Everlook. I said, I already knew it would happen. I, I chose to do it anyways, despite knowing that, because who else would? You know, who else would do the job that I did? I, I couldn't name another person. <laughs> or if there, if there was, they're gone. Those bridges were burned long ago, and he just burned another. I got no. I'm not. I'm not here to shit on White Kidney. It's just more so personality issues that are just really hard to deal with. If you ever said, hey, coming to America, you want to get a drink? I'd be, fuck yeah, dude. Let's fucking hang out and chill. You know, that'd be fine. But uh, I, I certainly will never work with him on a project again. Neither him nor a Dumbro in particular. <laughs> Again, no, no personal spite against a Dumbro. I think he does a good job. He works hard, but he's a fucking bureaucrat type. I, I don't like that kind. If this was an office building that we were working in and I was getting paid, then I'd be a little bit more accepting of that idea, but it's not. So trying to fucking pretend that it is just pissing me off, I'll tell you that. All right, well... This brings us on the last point. Uh, I, I believe that the project is being hamstrung for the sake of being like Northdale when we can be better than Northdale. We shouldn't aspire to be Northdale. We should aspire to be better than Northdale. We shouldn't even think about Northdale. We're already in many regards better than Northdale. And by the time BWL rolls around, we could have 15,000 players playing the server if we were doing things right. But I don't see that happening. And it's because we purposely restrict further advancement of the game for the sake of no changes, despite a super majority of players enjoying the small things or simply not caring. I don't think that this is a custom project in any means. I don't ever plan on adding custom shit. But if something is small and minor and is a quality of life update, I'll happily do it if it makes the game better, okay? Like, I don't think anybody has really complained about Tinker or Gizlock working as he should, Despite it not being Blizz-like, I don't think people have noticed that he doesn't cast the Goblin Dragon Gun if you're not in melee range. Wow, cool, so like, it doesn't change the game, it's just making the fucking AI of a boss fight better. I'm happy to do that. There's like, there's, there's a million fucking small little things that can be done to make the game better without changing the game at all. The, the idea that we let a handful of outspoken people dictate staff decisions simply because they are loud is insane. I think only 8 to 10 people complained about training dummies in total, and most of their complaints stem from gaining weapon skill, which I fixed immediately because, again, that's impactful to the game. If you're getting weapon skill off a training dummy, that's a problem. It's changing the game. 
but the training dummy itself doesn't fucking change the game. And I think every player who's gotten their Priebus at this point has been pretty appreciative, be able to test their DPS and test their parses. And they're, they're there too, mostly for me. And I could, if you, if it really came down to it, the training dummies wouldn't be removed. They would be moved to Programmer Island, and I would be the only one to have access to them. And that's because I kind of need them to test shit out in the game. It's a lot easier for my job. Either they are GM only, or players can have them. But that's the decision. And again, I think it's one of those things that just doesn't fucking matter. I think it's just one of those things that people have too much time on their hands and not enough to talk about, so they like to blow up something, and it's already been forgotten. I don't think it's been even mentioned in the last two weeks. People have forgotten about them, just like everything else. Nobody fucking remembers, nobody cares. They talk about it a lot, very vocally, when it happens or when it gets announced, because they have nothing else going on. They have It's the fucking hot button issue. So, like, letting people dictate... Letting people dictate policies is ridiculous, but the fact is that I still receive criticism from the staff and not the players over it. Players have forgotten, but the staff surely hasn't. In the staff's mind, it's been a fucking problem. It's like, you know, you can remove them yourself, dude. I, I, I don't really care to. Yeah, for everything. And for every little thing. And there's, there's a lot of things that are hard to argue against because they're not visible. Like, it's not, not a fucking uh, tracks and Kazakh dancing in Ashenville. It's like some minor spell mechanic that people don't realize. Oh, this six demon bag doesn't share a cooldown with a gnomish netomatic, pro netomatic projector because he uses the 1.12 cooldowns even though it's patch 1.2. Nobody fucking cares. It's a quality of life update. People don't like pressing their six demon bag and having all their engineering trinkets go on a 30 minute cooldown for no reason. That was fixed in the original game and I'm going to use the final state cooldowns because it's just better. It makes the gameplay better. That's really what I care about. That's why you have fucking Warsong Gulch coming out in a month. Actually, two weeks. Because nobody wants to wait four months for it. It's just it's better gameplay. That's what I care about. Yeah, same case with the zero XP games. There have been literally zero complaints outside of staff over being able to disable experience games in game. It's technically Blizz like because of the Chinese client thing, like I mentioned earlier in the video, but nobody complained about it. Not a single person complained because it doesn't affect them, and if it does affect them, it's because they want it to. They want to shut their experience off so they can play their twinks wherever they want without worrying about ruining their account. And again, it makes for better gameplay. I will do whatever I can to make the gameplay better. If I have to change leeway or adjust batching or move some mob spawns so they're not linked because it fucking chain pulls everything. It's like, I will happily do whatever it takes to make the gameplay smoother, you know? And the fact that I am being restricted from doing that, not arbitrarily, uh, based on the structure of trying to get stuff done around here, but because of the fucking complaints, too, is just insane and again it's it's always uh a complaint about the same four or five subjects but they fail to uh, mention the fact that i have a fifty thousand line insert that readjusts tons of stuff in the game nobody's noticed nobody's complained i don't think anybody's been complaining about proc rates in fact the one item that actually did have some recent complaints was for medicine pouch i had fucked up the uh spell power scaling but that already got fixed so get fixed right away whatever I don't want to sound like I'm angry or salty here, but I'm just trying to break through this list, so I'm talking fast. Uh, I've only got two more points on... Yeah, sure. Um, oh, just one more point, in fact. We could have had many more features, like deathless high scores for uh, hardcore players, PvP rank high scores, many other small gameplay features which could be implemented through our website and not in-game that would have no impact on the game. Like being able to see on a website's high score sheet who has died and based on their level you know being able to see who's level 60 and hasn't died yet effectively adds the hardcore game mode without actually adding it in the game all this stuff could be done on the web end or on the back end without changing the game whatsoever it would have zero impact on the game we choose not to though for whatever fucking reason and i don't know if it's just a combination of laziness or apathy but these are many, many features that players absolutely would love. And waiting waiting for people to demand something is a terrible business strategy. You want to give it to them before they even know they want it. So you introduce something and people say, wow, th this is amazing. I, I never even thought of this concept, but I love it. Why didn't we think of this before? Instead of waiting for people to fucking cry for three years, why can't we have this? It's like, why why, why can we not just preemptively make good decisions? 
And again, it boils down to laziness and apathy. Nobody wants to put in the work. I, I happily would, and I, I wouldn't mind doing it. The problem is I'm not a web developer. I don't handle the web stuff, and I'm not I'm not good with website stuff. So I, I would do it in game, but it can be done on the website, and it should be hard. You know, I can help out, set up the database to provide the right information for that. So yeah, it's just. It's a, it's again another point of frustration. I probably, I probably could have gone through these points in a little bit better of an order, but I just, I sat down the one day and wrote down on Notepad stuff that was pissing me off and why I want to, why I've lost all motivation to work on the project. Really, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that do count on me, and that's what's disappointing, honestly, and that's why. I, it was a very tough decision. I spent an entire week just thinking about it. In fact, this was the fir- this was the first week that I've left my house really to do things that weren't just like going and started by smokes and cigarettes in the past four months. I went out and saw my buddy's band play the other night. Went out and had some drinks and hung out with this one girl and was just like trying to get uh, trying to get my mind off shit. So it was, it was nice to get out. It kind of reminded me, you know, what what I've been giving up. I look in the mirror, man, and I see pictures of myself before starting a project, and I see what I look like right now, and man, it's not it's not pretty. <laughs> I've probably lost maybe 15 pounds just fucking eating like fucking pauper, man, trying to work on a project and not having time or finances to fucking continue on with that. You know, it's one of those things where right now I just, I really want to just fucking not worry about this. And... I guess that brings me to my next point. If I'm going to worry about something, I'd rather just worry about my own project. I've got Wallcraft to worry about. Uh, this past week, I've, I've booted back up Wallcraft, and I was playing playing it for a little bit, just enjoying it. It just made me realize just how good the game really can be. There's, there's a big reason why I don't play anymore. I develop. Not just because I enjoy developing more, but because Wallcraft is just better. <laughs> like, sorry, Wallcraft is just fucking better in every way. Basically, Wallcraft is... What well, vanilla WoW would be if any time you said, "Huh, why wasn't it like this?" or "Man, it would make more sense for it to be like this." Well, that's already like that on Warcraft. It's already been done. You know, for all, all the little things that you see and you just say, "Huh, it would make this would make more sense if it was." It's already taken care of. Like it's already fixed. All the little minor problems. You know, it, it, even just the other day, I was trying to mess around with some testing on stuff. Goblin mortar. As I was fixing it on Everlook, and I was reminded how I can't open the, ta- the targeting reticle while moving. I have to be standing still to open up the AOE targeting reticle for any class, if a mage's blizzard or a rain of fire. You have to stop moving to open up the targeting reticle before casting. That doesn't happen on Wallcraft. Like, Wallcraft, it works. It just works. I mean, the shit just works. You know, all, all the problems, all the little minor things that aren't blizz like, obviously, it's custom. But it's just how it should be. It makes more sense. You know, classes are developed. The classes are reworked. All the items are restatted. There's uh, there's entirely new map zones. You can you can go into the full Karazhan raid in vanilla WoW using your 1.12 client on uh, um, Wallcraft. The game obviously is magical, but it's not magical because it hasn't changed. It's just magical because it's good. That doesn't mean there isn't so much more that can be done and so much more potential that can be realized in the game. I think that's really the next step, you know. There's been, there's been other custom projects that have attempted it. Uh, v Plus and Turtle Hour are really the big two. V Plus, I think, just had really bad vision in terms of what makes good development. I don't think the developers really have a grasp on what, what is good. And Turtle Wow is an entirely different ball game. It's more like RP, RP Andy type stuff. I'm not gonna knock them, but it's just not my personal thing. You know, Wallcraft is for high octane, hardcore gamers, people who will sit there for fucking 16 hours a day and just play like a damn fiend. You know, it's, it's the the game is designed. Wallcraft is designed to be the the truly the last vanilla that you'll ever want to play or ever have to play. It's an endless vanilla conquest experience. You know, it's I, I I go back on Wallcraft and I log in for five minutes and I'm just immediately reminded why it's hard to play real vanilla anymore. I pl- I plan on going back to developing Wallcraft. I really do. I want to finish up the rest of the player housing systems that I've added. I want to finish up the guild based system. Rogue and Warlock are the last two classes that have to be reworked, and they've been on the back burner for a year now. So I'd like to get them taken care of. I'd like to I'd like to launch Wallcraft in the future. I'd like to really work on that, and put my time and effort into that. It's, it's not going to be anytime soon. I, I don't plan on launching it while Everlook is active, or at least until like Nax. I think Wallcraft is 
the way of the future, really. It really is. And anybody who's gone on Wallcraft has immediately agreed. And it's just better. <laughs> It's vanilla that is never stopped continued development. That's really the philosophy behind it. It takes the alpha wow design principles, all the unfinished content in vanilla, and fully refurbishes it, finishes it, and adds it into the game. Like stuff like player housing that they originally wanted to do, but they were technically limited to. We don't have those limitations anymore. It's just a lot of work to do, but... You know, I'm the man for the job there. I don't know. I, I thought about doing some fundraising, and uh, I had a Patreon page open, but personally, I'm I'm not comfortable with soliciting any type of donations or asking for money. Uh, I've never begged for money in my life, and I've never taken charity in my life. I'd rather go hungry. So uh, that's probably the biggest roadblock of uh, Wallcraft, though, is just I, I, I got to go get a day job, basically. I got to go pay these bills, buy dinner, and keep the power on. I really need a new setup, too. My computer is getting really old. I, I can't run Blender anymore. Uh, Python 3 no longer is compatible with Windows 7. Uh, I'm using a 750 Ti, a 15-year-old AMD processor. It's just not really holding up. So, yeah, I got to square away some dough and try and get the ball, ro ball rolling on that one. I think that uh, that wraps up all the points on the list. Um, 